Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good weekend, and welcome back to Star Citizen with the mighty jingles. Yes, it has been a very, very long time. Well, actually it hasn't been that long for me. A couple of months ago I did reinstall the game and attempt to have another go. This was on my old PC with the GTX 1080 Ti graphics card and 32GB of RAM. And after sitting through a loading screen that kept me there for 12 minutes when I finally got into the game, occasionally I managed as much as 8 frames per second, uh, sometimes dropping down to 1 frame every 4 or 5 seconds, all of this while running the game at a not particularly demanding 1080p resolution. Well, of course it suffered from low frame rates and long loading times jingles, bleated all of the Star Citizen fanboys, the game obviously has to be installed and played from a solid state drive. I mean, seriously, it's 2020. Who plays games installed on hard drives anymore? 95% uh, of everybody with a PC? But apparently, it's just not good enough. 7,200 RPM hard drives are just so last season, don't you know? Well, anyway, I've got a new PC now. AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT 12 core processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM, RTX 2080 graphics card, and it's all installed and running off a Samsung 2TB 970 EVO Plus M2 solid state drive with a read speed of 3.5 gigabytes per second and a write speed of 3.3 gigabytes per second. And if I can't get acceptable performance out of this setup, I cannot wait to see the excuses that the fanboys are going to come up with now. Now I'm not going to make you sit through the loading screen in real time, but it took 2 minutes 13 seconds. A vast improvement over when this was installed on a hard drive. And while that's definitely not what anybody would accuse of being fast, you do have to understand that we are loading into new Babbage, uh, which is easily the biggest and most intricately detailed environment currently available in the game. I should probably get all of the standard disclaimers out of the way right at the start here. Yes. Star Citizen is still in development. Yes, it has been an awfully long time. Uh, no, I'm not expecting it to be perfect. Yes, I'm expecting frame rate drops. I'm expecting bugs. I'm expecting glitches. It is not finished software. Although many people would argue that that is the point. It's never going to be finished software. And I think that's... Well, that's not fair. It's probably safe to say that the game isn't being developed in the same way as the traditional PC title. And this is often a defence that gets latched onto by the fanboys and apologists. And they have a point, because it's kind of been released in bits and pieces, as those bits and pieces are ready. Although, well, what's ready? And that's a good question. And the fact that the game is being, well, trickled out in dribs and drabs in the way that it has been over the last, I don't know, seven years, uh, is quite some source of contention. With the people on the pro Star Citizen side claiming that you can't call it alpha software in the same way that other PC games are developed because it's not being developed in the same way as other PC games and then the other side say well we're not the ones calling it alpha software and then the other side retort well we're not the ones calling it alpha software are we go to the Star Citizen webpage it's right there sign up for the alpha <laughs> You can't have it both ways. It either is or it isn't. And then the counter-argument comes back, well, they're only calling it an alpha because a better word hasn't yet been invented for it. And the argument goes on and on and on and on. And it will probably never stop. And, ooh, yeah, that was a very, very nasty frame rate drop. But it seems to be stabilising now. Again, I'm expecting this sort of thing. Um dare I say it, because it is alpha. <laughs> I love that the fanboys um, insist on saying, no, it's not an alpha, it's not being developed the same way as other games, and then when you point out one of the bugs or glitches, they say, yes, but it's only an alpha. <laughs> so where do I stand in all of this? Am I, you know, which of the two camps do I fall into? Am I a fanboy and an apologist? Or am I a scam citizen hater? And I guess I kind of have a foot in both camps, because I definitely have a horse in this race. I was an early adopter. Star Citizen's probably into me for the best part of a thousand dollars with the various different ship packages that I have bought, because I got very excited 
when I heard that Chris Roberts was looking to make another PC space game because Strike Commander, Wing Commander and its sequels, Freelancer, um, yeah. Chris Roberts has been responsible for some of the finest moments in PC gaming software. So in the beginning at least it was very much a case of shut up and take my money. And he did take my money. And then the years went by. <laughs> And very little seemed to happen. And the source of most of the complaints levelled against Star Citizen boiled down to the fact that it has taken a long time for very little to seem to happen. Exactly when Star Citizen's development began and how long it has been in development is a source of a not insignificant amount of argument and contention. Pre-development did begin in 2010, ten years ago. Has the game been in development for 10 years? Well, depends who you ask. Development did start in 2011 using the CryEngine 3, which was dropped, and they switched to the Lumberyard game engine, which necessitated mostly going back and starting from scratch. But the first playable segment of Star Citizen came out almost exactly seven years ago in 2013 with the release of the Hangar module, in October of that year, which is the year I did my first Star Citizen video. Oh, this is very pretty. Look at that. So to say that there hasn't been any progress is more than a little disingenuous. I mean, look at this. You couldn't do this in 2013 when you were wandering around the hangar module uh, looking at some of the ships that you'd spent your money on. But still, it was seven whole years ago, and there are plenty of companies out there that are entirely capable of pushing out two or even three AAA PC game titles in that space of time. So what's Star Citizen's excuse? Yes, there are some bugs on display here. There's another one. <laughs> it's to be expected. And I think a large part of the problem is because of the way Star Citizen is funded. It's almost entirely crowdsourced and people naturally want to know where their money went. But we'll go into that in more detail in a moment, because right now I'm going to try to do something about the frame rate. Because to be completely fair, I am running it in high detail at 4K resolution, because I have a 4K monitor. And that might not be fair. So let's see what we can do about that. You can see me here messing around with the various different resolution options. The first thing I try to do is drop it down to 2K resolution, which should still be pretty impressive, even on a 4K monitor. But what you're not seeing is what I was actually seeing at the time I was doing it. And that's because the screen capture software that I'm using is keeping everything at full screen. But it wasn't playing at full screen. What it actually looked like at the time was this. It didn't matter which options I chose, whether I went for full screen windowed, full screen, borderless, whatever, it just it looked like this. And I can't really play it like this. Now, I'm reasonably sure that the issue with the resolution scaling may not be something that affects everybody, but it was affecting me, and I couldn't play it like this. So I, I had no option but to continue playing in 4K, the native resolution of my monitor. But I still wanted to improve the frame rate, so I dropped the detail settings down to medium, as a result of which I was fully expecting everything to look, well, bad. And that's where I got a very pleasant surprise, because it didn't look bad. It looked like this. Frame rates are still not great, but I'm definitely getting a frame rate improvement. I'm still running it at 4K resolution. But I'm not noticing any noticeable drop in graphical fidelity. It still looks really, really good. So that was something of a surprise. And a very, very welcome one. I was extremely impressed with how good things looked on medium detail settings. And the frame rate improvement wasn't great, but it was definitely there. I very rarely went over 30 frames per second. But just look at this. Check this out. And that's medium detail settings. I'm still having fairly frequent frame rate stutters, but the average frame rate is up. I mean, I am running it in 4K. Not that I wanted to run it in 4K, but I didn't really have any choice because the resolution scaling doesn't seem to be working on my system. 
but it does look pretty. And if nothing else, you definitely have to hand it to Star Citizen's art and design department. Because this looks... Oh, there's, a, there's an election going on in Star Citizen at the moment, by the way. I'm sure it's completely unrelated to current events in the real world. But yes, getting back to the design aesthetic, they've absolutely knocked it out of the park. I mean, look at this. Look at the fresh fruit and vegetables. And yes, you can buy these. <laughs> Not that I'm going to. The art and design team working for Robert Space Industries or Cloud Imperium Games or whatever the hell they're calling themselves, they deserve every piece of recognition that you can possibly bestow upon them. I mean, if you were to ask yourself what would a futuristic space hippie shopping mall look like, this would be it. Think of all the effort that's gone into something as simple as this, a smoothie shop. Something that you may not ever pay any attention to. But a bunch of people had to sit down, design the layout, the corporate aesthetic, design logos and packaging for everything on sale. It's not like World of Warcraft, for example, where every inn that you walk into is exactly the same as every other inn. These are all unique. Every Garcia's Greens smoothie shop looks the same, in the same way that all McDonald's have the same design aesthetic and all uh, Burger Kings have the same design aesthetic, but they don't look the same as the Whammer's Burger Bars or the Twins Coffee Bars. You know, they're unique in that respect. They each share their own corporate design aesthetic in the same way that corporate eateries do in the real world. You know, if somebody knocked you out and you woke up in a Starbucks, you'd know you were in a Starbucks purely by the furniture and the decor, and that's true here as well. And somebody had to design that, and they've done an amazing job. We can go out onto the surface, by the way. We're going to do that later. Because here on New Babbage, it's bloody cold out there, and it will kill you if you're not wearing the proper clothing. But going back to what I mentioned earlier, before I forget, because I do have a habit of doing that, because the unique way in which crowd sit crowd citizen <laughs> there's, a, there's a Freudian slip if ever I've heard one. Uh, the unique way in which Star Citizen has been funded, because it's almost entirely been funded through crowdsourcing, has probably been a cause of a lot of the developmental problems that the game has and continues to suffer. Because if you've pumped hundreds or oh, thousands of dollars into the development of a game, you want to see where that money went. Which of course is why the first playable uh, module, as they were calling them back then for Star Citizen, was the hangar module. So people could actually see and walk around and in some of the ships that they'd pledged in order to fund the development of the game. So it's probably fair to say, and I don't think too many people would argue with this, is that instead of just cracking on, getting their heads down and focusing on developing an actual game in the same way that pretty much every other development studio does, Cloud Imperium games have, as well as that, also been forced to keep pushing out things like the Hangar module to keep their existing backers happy, give them something to play with and show them where their money went, as well as having to constantly come up with new promotional things uh, that aren't necessarily pushing the game development along, but are necessary in order to ensure that more development money keeps coming in. And of course, at some point, those new backers are also going to start developing itchy feet, and are going to want to see where their money went. So on the one hand, the crowdsourcing is great. If it hadn't been for crowdsourcing, Star Citizen might never have gotten off the drawing board, and even if it had, it absolutely wouldn't have been as ambitious a project as it is. The downside, of course, is that you have to keep showing a bit of skirt in order to keep people happy, and that has to have an impact on the development process. It also doesn't help that when the development of your game stretches over the at least seven years that Star Citizen already has, you have to keep going back and rewriting huge sections of your code to keep up with current or even next-gen technology. Which is why this game runs like a dog, unless you have it installed on a solid-state drive. 
and why even if you're running on a 12 core processor with 64 gigabytes of RAM and an RTX 2080 graphics card, I struggle on medium settings to get more than 30 frames per second. That's just the price you pay for constantly trying to develop for the next generation of technology so that when your game is eventually approaching anything even resembling a finished status, it's still going to look current. And that's always been a problem when you're trying to make your game look as good as it possibly can. You look at games like Age of Conan when it first came out, it was lauded for having the most realistic graphics that anybody had ever seen on the PC up until then, but within a year it looked out of date. By contrast, look at games like Guild Wars 2 or World of Warcraft, games that never even tried to approach this kind of level of graphical fidelity. Instead, they went for style over substance, and as a result they've aged remarkably well, despite, or in fact because, of the relatively primitive nature of their graphics engines. The problem with trying to push the envelope in your graphics engine is that if you don't catch that envelope in a relatively short development time, you're going to end up looking like yesterday's news because the envelope has an annoying habit of constantly moving away from you. Having said that though, Star Citizen does look very, very nice. I think they've got a couple of years at least before this starts to look like yesterday's news. Once again, I really can't say enough nice things about the art and design team working for Cloud Imperium Games. They really have absolutely knocked this clean out of the park. And remember, lest you forget, this is on medium graphic settings. Anyway, that's quite enough sightseeing. Let's go and do something. I did say we were going to take a walk outside, and that's why I've switched into this undersuit. I'm not quite sure why they call it an undersuit. It looks pretty oversuity to me, but hey, undersuit it is. And this suit is designed to keep you alive and comfortable at extremely low temperatures, which is what we're going to need if we're going to go outside for a walk here on New Babbage. Well, I say we're going outside for a walk. We are going outside for a walk, but not through choice. I'm at a vehicle retrieval console at the ground garage because I have a grey cat buggy. So we're going to retrieve it. It's going to be delivered uh, to a garage. Garage 1. Awesome. That's right next to me. So we're going to go for a drive on the surface of New Babbage in my grey cat. Or at least that was the plan. That buggy seems to be very happy to see me. <laughs> yeah. I ran into a couple of bugs here. There it goes. Oh, it stopped. Wait, wait, wait. And there it goes again. <laughs> Bless it. It can hardly contain its excitement. Although it does seem to calm down. Why not? No, steady on. Let's get in the driver's seat. Uh, okay. Well, it wouldn't be... Oh, Star Citizen. If there weren't a couple of bugs. Well, it wouldn't be any game that's early in development. Can you say it's still early in development when it's been going for seven years? Depends who you ask, I suppose. <laughs> this sort of thing doesn't piss me off. This is more amusing than anything else. And it certainly would make for a nice screenshot. Although probably not the kind of screenshot that Cloud Imperium Games would be anxious to see published. Um, let's get out. If I even can get out of a buggy in this state... And, yep, I can. Okay. Right. So now what? Tell you what, why don't I go to the vehicle retrieval console, store the buggy, and then retrieve it again? That should work, yeah? Seems like a good plan. Let's give it a go. So there we go. Grey cat buggy. We'll store it. It'll probably take a few seconds. Oh, there we go. That was quick. And now we retrieve it again. Please wait while your vehicle is being delivered to the platform. Please deliver it to the same garage. Please deliver it to the same garage. Come on, there we go. Yeah, awesome. Garage number one. On the other side of the door, and there it is. In a bug-free context this time. Fantastic. The grey cat buggy. It's quite ironic that it's a buggy, really, isn't it? <laughs> Considering what we're about to see. So, enter the driver's seat, and we're going to go for a drive on the surface of New Babbage. Let's engage the uh, systems. There we go. 
So how does this work? Do I just drive up to the door? It does say element moves down, so I'm assuming that the garage door drops. Come on then. Element moves down, it says. I beg to differ. Nope, drove into the door, nothing happens. So the garage door doesn't work either. <laughs> All right, fine. Let's go and uh, put the buggy back into storage. You ready for bug number three? Here it comes. What do you mean, claim? What does claim mean? Claim vehicle insurance? What? What are you talking about? Standard version with a factory setup will be delivered to your current location after a period of time. What do you mean, insurance claim? There's nothing wrong with it. I just left it in the garage. Look, it's still there. Why am I claiming insurance on a vehicle that hasn't been lost? What's going on? Claim. Okay, I'll file a claim. And if I want it back now, rather than waiting two minutes, I have to pay a fee. For a vehicle that hasn't actually been lost. You know what? Screw that. So I went for a walk instead. Now you access the surface via the airlock. Although the atmosphere I believe here is breathable. It's just really cold. It's like minus 70, minus 75 degrees. And the standard undersuit that you get will only keep you alive in temperatures as low as 40 degrees below. Uh, the suit that I'm wearing at the moment will keep you nice and toasty as low as, I think, minus 225? I don't know. A lot. It can definitely handle the surface of new Babbage. Oh look, other side of the garage door. There's that buggy I lost and had to file an insurance claim on. Anyway, I'm determined to get a vehicle of some description working, so let's head to the starport, because I do have a fair number of ships at my disposal. Now, heading to the starport isn't quite the same as going to the shopping mall. There's a security checkpoint here, and I appear to have a gun on my hip. And the security here don't look like they take shit from anyone. They definitely have bigger guns than me. Okay, I've got a very bad feeling about this, by the way. But what's the worst that could possibly happen? <laughs> Your safety is our priority, so I have to pass through a scan gate in order to get to the starport. Okay. Here we go. And... Okay, that was a... That was a whole bunch of nothing. It turns out New Babbage was colonised by Texas. <laughs> I have no idea what the security scans here are for, but they're clearly not for firearms. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Uh, maybe that's something on the to-do list. Uh, make the security checkpoints actually work. Or, I don't know, maybe I have a permit. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, ships. That's what we're here for, after all. It is Star Citizen. It's not Walk Citizen or Shopping Citizen. As you can see, I have quite a few horses in this particular race. These are all the ships that I've pledged. Aegis Gladius, Aegis Retaliator, Anvil Gladiator, Anvil Hornet, Anvil Hornet Ghost, Drake Cutlass Best in Show Edition. I think I got that for being a member of the Chairman's Club. Drake Cutlass Black. Asperia Glaive. Wait, what? What's an Asperia Glaive? I know nothing about that. I definitely didn't buy that. Uh, let's go and check it out. So, recover it to the hangar, take an elevator to the hangar, and ooh, there it is. Oh, I've definitely never seen that before. I suspect it may be a reward for being a backer of the game for as long as I have been. It doesn't look... You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of a Kulrathi ship from Wing Commander, which is almost certainly what it was probably designed on as a sort of nod to Chris Roberts' previous games. The problem with my Asperia Glaive is that I have no idea how to get into the cockpit. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the whole process of me uh, wandering around the ship trying to look for a way in. Suffice to say, after a couple of minutes of just 
wandering around and trying to click on everything that looked like it might open a hatch. I just gave up. Let's try again with my Origin M50 Interceptor. I at least know how to get into that, and it's red, so it goes fast. It is a very, very pretty ship. I love... Again, you know, hats off to the art and design team, because that is a very sexy looking starship. And it is fast. I just can't remember how to fly it. <laughs> Although, I can at least, I think, remember how to get into it. Is it this side or the other side? Ooh, I've opened the canopy. Okay, on to start. You know, when your game's about flying starships around the galaxy, it shouldn't be this difficult to get into them. I'm just saying. And yes, I realise that once you've figured it out the first time for each ship, because they're all different. <laughs> Or, well, I mean, interceptors are all broadly similar. Uh, Medium-sized ships are all broadly similar, but they're not all exactly the same. I mean, I couldn't figure out how to get into the glaive at all. But once I do figure it out, it's never going to be a problem again. But it, it shouldn't be a problem in the first place. I realise this is a minor quibble, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Particularly because of how ridiculously easy it is to get out of your ship. Yep. That just happened. And shortly afterwards, well actually, it took quite some time, but a few minutes later, uh, this happened. Does that qualify as a jingles landing? <laughs> Technically, no. Morally, yeah. This time I'm not going to argue the toss on the insurance claim over the M50 Interceptor. I think, um, yeah, that one was on me. Instead, oh, what's going on with the hangar door? Oh, another bug. Yeah, fine, whatever. Uh, instead, I'm going to have another go. This time in the Gladius. I don't actually know how to fly anything in Star Citizen. It's been so long. Um, it's been... It might even have been two years since I actually flew anything in this game. And the thing about Star Citizen is that it takes the whole flying thing very, very seriously indeed. And I'm not exaggerating, it's on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 levels of detail and intricacy. A standard PC 102 key keyboard doesn't have enough keys on it to cover everything that needs to be covered. Uh, keys have multiple functions depending on whether or not you're just pressing the key or holding down control while pressing the key or holding down alt while pressing the key. You don't need to know absolutely every individual a uh, little control key, uh, but it, it, it helps if you know most of them, and I didn't. Nevertheless, despite that, it wasn't actually that bad. I mean, I wouldn't want to be going into a dogfight until I've had a lot more practice, but it is relatively easy to get to grips with. I didn't master the basics of flight and navigation instantly, obviously, this is me we're talking about, but all I really wanted to do was to be able to get into a ship, successfully launch, fly somewhere, and successfully land. And I was able to do that within a few minutes. Sure, there were a couple of bumps and uh, moments along the way when I managed to, on more than one occasion, turn the ship off. <laughs> and some things didn't work as advertised. Uh, the game kept trying to tell me to press F2 to plot my route, but there were no routes to plot when I did press F2. Maybe I was doing something wrong? I, I, I don't know. Like I said, there's no tutorial. But I at least managed to eventually get this far without having to go to the lengths of checking any external websites for guides. It's pretty... I don't want to say intuitive, but it's not that difficult to work out what it is you're supposed to be doing and how to do it. And so after a couple of minutes of fumbling around and just guessing <laughs> what it was I was supposed to be doing, I found myself doing something that I've wanted to do in Star Citizen ever since I first heard that it was possible. Fly across space, find a planet, and fly down to the surface. 
Now, maybe I'm just easily pleased, but the fact that I was able to do this without any help was immensely satisfying. The transition from orbit down to the surface was flawless and seamless, and it just looked, felt, and sounded right. I don't know what it should look, feel, and sound like, because I've never had to take a starfighter from orbit down to the surface of a planet. But I've done it in No Man's Sky, and I've done it in Elite Dangerous. And it pains me to say this, but Star Citizen does it better. I haven't done everything that I wanted to do yet, however. I've managed to take off, I've managed to get into orbit without accidentally um, exiting my ship again. I've managed to transit across space. I've managed to take a ship down from orbit to the surface of a planet. I'm really enjoying the view here. It does look pretty nice. But now, of course, I have to get the ship back to somewhere civilised and get it down in one piece. And oh my god, look at that. Wow. That is... Wow. You know, I was going to say, this looks really good for an alpha. <laughs> <laughs> but after seven years of development, I think this is the least that we can expect. Still, it does look very, very nice. So, quick jump back to New Babbage. Prep for atmospheric re-entry, which, by the way, is quite a visual treat in and of itself. Let's just uh, stop and admire this, because it really is quite impressive. Look at that. It's the little things that keep me amused. <laughs> but I don't remember seeing any other game do this. That's how it looks from inside the cockpit. And yeah, that is my Origin M50 Interceptor. <laughs> I know, I know. But enough of that. We still have to make a successful landing at the starport. There's, I think it's called Port Trasler, the city. And because I've never seen it from up here before, I didn't actually know where the starport was, although I remembered it was the end of a of a travel tube, and that kind of looked like it, so I'm just following that. I had already requested landing clearance via the communications menu uh, from traffic control, and they'd assigned me a landing pad, but I didn't know where the landing pad was until I got this close, and suddenly the heads-up display popped up with an indicator. So I kind of found my assigned landing pad, more through luck than judgement. <laughs> but I found it. And I managed to get the ship landed without breaking anything, which is probably going to come as an extreme surprise to anybody who's watched my Elite Dangerous videos. And so that was my experience of Star Citizen. Two years on from the last time I looked at it, at least. And seven years into development, depending on how you judge when the game went into development. Certainly seven years on from the release of the Hangar module, which was the first opportunity anybody had outside of Cloud Imperium games to actually get their hands on and play. And you know what? It is impressive. I mean, I don't know if it's seven years worth of impressive, but it is impressive. And I have to admit, I'm looking forward to see what they come up with next. I just hope I don't have to wait another two years to see it. That's it. I'm done. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're all having a great weekend. Take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time. Does anybody know how I get out of the cockpit? Oh great. I'm stuck in here, aren't I? Don't worry. We'll cut this bit out.